Well, hey there, church. Thank you for joining us on our Wednesday study as we pick, pick up here at Jeremiah chapter 6. Uh, this week, a little bit different. We're going to have some updates, some good news to announce, and we'll do that here at the beginning. And then uh, we're going to cover just a little portion of Jeremiah 6 and then into Jeremiah 7 next week. So I want to sort of prime the pump with a little bit of Jeremiah 6 this week as we get towards Jeremiah 7 next week. But first and foremost, some updates. Some good news, some not so positive news, just for prayer requests, and then, uh, you know, it's kind of how it goes around here. So we'll start, I always like to start sort of with the negative. We have had a lot of folks down, uh, some surgeries, some things like, thankfully all the surgeries we've heard about so far have been going well. Uh, Matt and Lindsay White, of course, had their little one, it looks like everything's good there. I think both mom and baby are doing well. Uh, so great Exciting praises there. I ask you to continue to pray for those dealing with surgeries. Pray for Matt and Lindsay as they bring home baby Cole. Uh, and, of course, pray for big sister as well and all of that. And so we thank you for that, church. We, we covet those prayers. Uh, so just that update there. Also good news. We have a start date back for meeting in person on Wednesdays, and that is going to be Wednesday, May 5th. And so that will be our first Wednesday back in person at 630 now, if you're still watching with us via YouTube, we'd love to have you join us in person on that Wednesday, but we understand you may not be there yet. You may not be ready uh, to do that, and that's okay. Uh, so what I'll do is earlier in that day, I'll still prepare a short devotion, kind of like what we've been doing to this point, uh, and then we'll just have it that night. We'll, we'll again talk about that same passage, but it'll be more of a discussion, open-based uh, thing on Wednesday night. So don't don't worry if you're not ready to start coming on Wednesdays yet. No pressure. We'd love to have you, but we don't want to pressure you, and I don't want you to think that that means these will stop. I will continue posting uh, a short little devotion on Wednesday as well for those of you who aren't quite ready or you're not able to come out yet. Uh, that's okay. We'll still have something there for you, and we appreciate you, and we love you. Uh, also, we have a start date back for Sunday school. The Sunday before the 5th is the 2nd of May. And we will have Sunday school back starting on the 2nd. Now, what we will do to start uh, is for the adults, we will all meet in the fellowship hall. And that will give us a little bit of room to spread out and to meet together and to have Sunday school. And so we encourage you to come be a part of that as well if you're able. Uh, we'll start back with the 945 Sunday school time and, and uh, try to get going with that and ramp back up and, and try to get back to what things were before COVID. Obviously, it, it'll never be the exactly the same, but uh, we're going to try to start back with some stuff. So May 2nd for Sunday school, May 5th for in-person Wednesdays at 630. Uh, we'd love to have you join us for that if you're able. If not, don't worry. We'll continue to post the Wednesday studies here. We'll continue to post uh, the Sunday morning message here as well, just like we have been. So none of that will change, uh, but we would encourage you if you're able to come be with us in person. So with that in mind, let's jump to Jeremiah chapter 6. And the part I want us to look at here sort of picks up at 16. And if I'm not ignoring 1 to 16. I, there's good in there, but God continuing to talk about what's going to happen. He's talking about the people that are coming to conquer, talking about what the people have done to deserve to be conquered, this, that, and the other. But I wanted us to look at 16 uh, through to about 21. And, uh, well, to, through 20. And then that'll sort of carry us into next week as we look at chapter 7. And this is what Jeremiah 6, 16 says. It says, this is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and you walk in it. You'll find rest for your souls. But you said, we will not walk in it. And so we just look there at the beginning, of 16 right there, and what does it say? You know, stand at the crossroads, look for the ancient past, ask where the good way is, and you'll walk in it, and you'll find rest for your souls. But you said, we will not walk in it. So God's saying here, you had the opportunity to do good, you had the opportunity to look for the right ways, yet you made a choice to say, I'm not going to do that. Notice there it said at the beginning of 16, stand at the crossroads and look for the ancient path, ask where the good way is, and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. Notice there it didn't say that it was necessarily the easiest thing to find. You know, it might have been a little difficult. It said you had to ask for the ancient path, ask where the good way is, look for these things, right? It wasn't necessarily the most easy thing to see. But then it says they said we will not walk in it. 
Church, sometimes we have to think about that. There's, there's the easy way. Sometimes there's a hard way. And I'm not saying God is always the hard way. But we have to understand that God is not always the easy way. And I would say more often than not, he is not the easy way. Right? The easy thing to do would just be to give in to the world. Live in the temporary moments the world dangles in front of you and seek out after those things. The hard is to deny self. To deny the desires of the world, the desires of the heart, and seek out what it is God wants for us. Because God sometimes tells us to deny the earthly pleasure. God tells us to desire Him over anything else. And we see here that Israel was not doing that. It was all about them. So we see in 17, it says this, I appointed watchmen over you and said, listen to the sound of the trumpet, but you said we will not listen. Therefore hear, O nations, observe, O witnesses, what will happen to them here. O earth, I am bringing disaster on this people, the fruit of their schemes, because they have not listened to my words and have rejected my law. Notice there, God very clearly lays out why this is happening, not because God wants to punish someone, not because God desires to make an example of someone, not because God is just up there bored and decided, hey, let's go have some fun and torture the people of Israel. No, what does God say? He says it clearly. I'm bringing disaster on the people, the fruit of their schemes, because they have not listened to my words and have rejected my law. Again, God's not just bored and wanting to torture someone. He's punishing those who have rejected him. Remember, as we look at this, it'd be easy for the world to twist this and say, well, God just, I mean, it was one and done, right? They messed up once and God's just wiping them out. No, if you remember from last week or two weeks ago when we talked about it, God said there was not one left who was righteous. That even the leadership had been corrupted. So this isn't a one-and-done thing. This is God showing how patient he has been to this point that he's gotten to this point where he has to do this. That they have not listened to his words. They have rejected his law. This has been thing after thing after thing after thing. And so anyone that would tell you, oh, well, he's just being vengeful for the sake of being vengeful. No, he's not. He has given them chance after chance after chance in the same way that he gives us chance after chance after chance. But eventually that runs out. We see what's happened here with Israel. And I pray that you would not allow yourself, that if you're listening to these words, if you're studying these lessons with us and you haven't given your life to Christ because you think you're waiting on some moment that, you know, you're going to do it, you know, this deathbed confession of, oh, I'll just go do what I want, and then right before I die, I'll do it. Please, please don't play that game. Because we don't know the number of our days. We know that eventually God will remove us from this place, but I don't know when that will be for you. you hear these words, if you hear nothing else, hear this. The time to accept and give your life to God is right now. It is this moment. And if you're out there and you've not done that, that is absolutely step one. If you're out there and you've given your life to God, but you find yourself desiring the ways of the world more than you're seeking out after God, then right now is the time to pray for forgiveness and ask God to guide the actions of your heart to seek him. We see what God says in 20. What do I care about incense from Sheba or sweet calmness from a distant land? See, now the people had decided that since God was going to bring punishment, oh, well, now we need to get right. We need to, to do the things we're supposed to do. God here calling them out on it. And so when you see that, what do I care about incense from Sheba? Sheba was... Uh, located in southwestern Arabia. It was the center of the spice trade. You know, in, in, in our terms today, this is like, you know, going to Whole Foods and buying the expensive spices or, or something like that, or Penzi's Market or something like that, buying the expensive 
things. That's what they were doing. They were offering up these expensive things to God, trying to buy their way out of trouble. That's not just a now thing. People trying to buy their way out of trouble. This is what the people are doing. All of a sudden, they're offering themselves up these expensive things. And God says, your burnt offerings are not acceptable. Your sacrifices do not please me. The idea here, the, the exact wording being, you're not going to buy your way out of this. And I think a lot of us are guilty of this sometimes. We think, oh, well, if I do enough good or if I donate enough money or something, I can cover some of the things I've done, and it just does not work that way. Right? You can't do enough. You can't give enough money. You can't go on enough mission trips. If you're not a believer, if you've not given your life over to Christ, if you've not accepted him as Lord and Savior, if you've not admitted sinfulness and asked for forgiveness through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, none of the money you give or the trips you go on are going to save you. No amount of good works saves us. And we do see clearly in Scripture that through our faith, good works should happen. Yes, we need to do those things. We are supposed to tithe. We are supposed to witness and do those different things. But we do that through our relationship with Christ. Without that relationship, those things are just worthless motions. So church, we need to get the order right. We need to get our hearts right so that those things are no longer worthless motions, but pleasing offerings to the Lord. It's the old heart, uh, cart before the horse mentality. And so church, my challenge to all of us, to myself this week, is exactly that. Is, is our heart in the right place with what we're doing? Are we seeking to further the ministry of God, or are we seeking to further the ministry of ourselves? Are we seeking to give God glory, or are we just trying to play the game? Right? The Israelites here think they can sort of pull the wool over God's eyes, that all of a sudden they're going to start making the right offerings, and God's going to, oh, okay, I see now. The biggest mistake the Israelites are making here are thinking, is thinking that they are smarter than God. And oh, how often do we in our humanity fall into that trap? Thinking for some reason that we might be smarter than the God who created the universe. Church, one of the things I've learned is that if you walk into a room assume yourself to be the smartest person in it, chances are you're probably wrong. You can't always think we're the smartest person in the room. We should always go into a situation seeing what we could learn. Especially when dealing with God, we have to understand we're not smarter than Him. I don't care how much life experience you have, I don't care how much book knowledge you have, you are not smarter than than the eternal God. And it would do us all well to remember that and to keep it floating in the front of our mind, realizing we cannot outsmart God. But we can learn from him and he will gladly and freely teach us if we're willing to listen. The question today, church, is are you willing to listen? Let us pray. God, we thank you for today. God, I pray that we would be willing to listen. That we wouldn't try to do these showy worship activities without first settling our relationship with you. God, that our actions would come through a beautiful relationship to you that we would not be like these Israelites trying to appease you like we could outsmart you that we would have a healthy respect for the power 
and the wisdom that you have. God, that we would flee from the world and run to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, church, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you remember from the beginning of this, Wednesdays starting back up May 5th at 6.30. Sunday school starting up May 2nd at 9.45. We would love to have you join us in person for all of those things. We'll continue to post here on the YouTube channel. Hey, remember, we love you. There is absolutely nothing you can do about that. And until we see you in person, stay safe. We hope to see you very soon.